Game base is on. We've got Jay Fresh and Washington for the Palms and Nick Shappy, and it looks like. Referees ready. Layers ready. Stand by. And we are off. Balot for the Sharks and fresh for the Palms, chipping away at those eight reps. Now those dumbbells are 40 pounds a piece for the gentlemen. The ladies waiting in the hash mark on the side. They cannot start. Now, the Sharks did receive a fault there because the player started her movement without Shappy being in that hash mark. You can see those hash marks where the additional players are off on the side. Placencia for the Palms and Washington on your screen. Now switching out a little trip up there. That's Shappy. He's busting through those burpees very quickly. Both teams neck and neck. Washington and Shappy going rep for rep on these burpees. It looks like there was one fault. Now, Shappy has tapped out. Okay, we've got Heather Hudson. And, but, okay, now we've got Shappy on the screen from the ground to overhead. Those are 50 pound dumbbells and Washington for the palms. Both going rep for rep. Both teams very close. All right, and both teams still in quadrant number two. As we can see, both ladies chipping away. That's Heather Hudson on your screen. Two reps remaining for Heather. One rep for her, one rep for the Sharks as well. Now Shappy onto the burpees. They've got one rep remaining, and that's Townsend. Townsend for the Sharks. And that's Heather Hudson on your screen. She's got two reps remaining. And it looks like the Sharks and the Palms are going to go for a substitution. Sharks have a, oh, there was a fault again for the Sharks as their player attempted a movement and then was held. Now, Presley for the Palms. He has one rep remaining. He is complete. Secord. And let's see who we have here for the Sharks. Can't see her name, I'm sorry. Let's see, both teams neck and neck. It looks like the Sharks have jumped ahead. Three laps for the Shark. And I have not seen the hands go up for the referees. So the Sharks have slipped ahead. They are in quadrant number four. They only have two reps at each movement. 70 pounds for the men, 50 pounds for the ladies. That's gunning. Making that devil's press look easy. Secord trying to play catch up. They are very tight, but it looks like the Sharks are gonna edge them out last rep. And that's gonna do it. The Sharks are going to take the first race of the day, and the Palms will finish under the cap with plenty of time to spare. Two points going to the Sharks for winning that race. One, po one point will go to the Palms. That was pretty fast paced. It went back and forth. Um, a lot of things can happen, as you can see, the communication breakdown with this type of race, especially the partner forward. They can't start a movement without having their partner in the hash. And it happened twice for the Sharks there. So, you know, working on those things, practice, that's what's going to help. Um, it looked like it didn't happen at all for the Palms, but the speed with those burpees over. Um, what are your thoughts? It looked like it just came to strength, came down to strength at the end of the day. It looked like everybody had their transitions down. Even with the little slip-ups, they were able to get back into the rhythm. But at the end of the day, the Sharks were just stronger and faster. Absolutely. Well, we're going to reset the grid, then we're going to come back and get set up for our mirror race.
what I love about Slate. First of all, it's lactose free. It has 175 milligrams caffeine, so it's great to take it instead of your coffee. And it has 20 grams of protein, no sugar added, so it's great for breakfast. The other one I love is the chocolate milk one. Who doesn't love chocolate milk? You can have it while having 20 grams of protein included at the same time, so it helps you get your protein in during the day, recover from workouts. In a typical day, I'm usually kind of running around with my head cut off a little bit, and I'm constantly needing just a quick and easy snack that's more than just like a shake or a protein bar that's really not that much protein and, and stuff like that. So this is just really easy to bring with me, and it keeps me a lot fuller than, say, like a protein shake would. And it's just easy on the go. Like, you can't really bring chicken breast with you. You can, but it's kind of weird. This is a lot more convenient because I could just put it in a little Ziploc bag, take it with me and go and eat it either between coaching or between my sessions or whatever I need to do. Even in the car, that's a big one. When I'm traveling and I'm just like, can't really eat a bowl of something, I just need something that's quick and easy that I can eat with my hands. As a nutrition coach, I'm always looking for easy snacks to recommend to my clients and obviously for myself as well. I'm a little bit more picky on ingredients because I like things that are just simple and clean without a bunch of like added chemicals and crap. So this is perfect. It's literally two ingredients, pork, ham, and salt. Like that's it. Just two things. All right, folks, we are back. Heading into race number two, our mirror race. Now, a brief overview of the race. The barbell cannot touch the ground at all once it comes up in quadrant number one. If it does, all players must run back to the start line before continuing, and any player on the grid may assist supporting the barbell as long as it is not during the actual movement that needs to be performed. So essentially, these players are acting as human racks from quadrant one all the way through quadrant number four. Today's movement in our mirror match is the hang squat clean. Weight for the gentleman is 205 pounds and for the ladies, 140 pounds. Now once that barbell leaves the ground, once again, it cannot go to the ground. If it touches the ground, you can pretty much kiss this race goodbye unless the other team does it. Um, as you can also see on your screen, they have assigned an element value of two. This will kick back to what we were saying earlier in the pregame. Uh, anybody who performs a repetition, or let's say one player completes all eight repetitions, they will receive 16 points on their impact score for the eight repetitions and the element value of two points per rep. The most important thing to remember here for the hang squat cleans is to squat all the way below parallel to make that really clear to the judges. So that's really what the judges are gonna, the refs are gonna be looking here for here today. Absolutely. Squatting all the way down and that full extension at the top. Yeah, absolutely. It's a professional sport. We've got referees out there. They're watching everything. If there's anything that's even off a little bit, they're gonna call it. Um, if there's any questions ever, they always have a, re they'll have a review. We can go to the referee reviews. Um, even if we need to, they'll rerun a, an entire race or a section of a race. So lots of different things going on. Uh, if you haven't already, please follow us on YouTube, by the way, and smash that bell because it will alert you every time that we have a match coming up. We have matches today at 11 o'clock. This is the match you're watching. Then at 1.30, 6 p.m. Sorry, 4.30 and... 4 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. My apologies. All right, and we're about 15 seconds away from kicking off this mirror race. All right, and it looks like Jay Fresh. It's hard to see what we got. All right, so the Wild are out on Balot for... It's all right, both teams are gonna be pretty much neck and neck in this first quadrant. Now they have eight repetitions apiece. The males on one side, females on the other. Weight for the gentlemen, 205 pounds and 140 pounds for the ladies. Now the Sharks are just slightly ahead. Now there is a little bit of a communication breakdown here. The Sharks are having an issue. They're trying to do a substitution, trying to make movements. Let's see, and now the hands are up for the palms. They're about two reps behind the Sharks currently. As you can see, both teams on your screen right now. 
Now, as we spoke out about earlier, these players cannot put these barbells down until they have finished all the repetitions in all four quadrants. Looking at the palms here, we've got Washington and Heather Hudson going rep for rep. They've got four reps remaining. The Sharks are right behind them, one rep behind. Little stumble there from Gunning, but she was able to maintain, saving them. The Sharks trying to play catch up. The Palms are just ahead. This is going to come down to just a few seconds in quadrant number four. That's Nimchek. Nimchek. And that's Presley on your screen. And the Palms now have taken race number two. And the Sharks still need to finish up under the cap, which they will. Plenty of time. Two points now going to the Palms unofficially for that mirror and one point unofficially to the Sharks. And if it goes the way we think it did, then they will be all tied up heading into race number three. Yeah, those hang squat queens always get those pe get people get people with that depth. Um, that leg power, that stamina that you have to have to squat all the way down and just come up every single time and make that standard. Yeah, and mainly it comes down to communication here. You know, with that mirror, that barbell has to come up. You have to know when they're done with their eight or ten reps, whatever it is for that particular match. And then um, and, and if that bar goes down, of course, they're looking into trouble. Now let's look ahead at our home ringer point that is coming up. As far as the ringer point, our home team today, the Sharks, they have chosen nine muscle-ups. So the way this ringer point works, it is very, very fast. The teams have chosen one player of each, Ambrosio for the Sharks and Schaefer for the Palms. Now they will come out, they will do nine muscle-ups as quickly as possible and then run off the grid from start to finish. Whoever can do it for Athasis is going to take this race. And as you can see here also, they have an element value of two. So, for the both of these players, Ambrosio and Schaefer, they have nine ring muscle-ups, the element value of two. So, if they both successfully complete all of the element in this race, they will receive 18 points on their impact score, and that is how we're gauging it. Um, this will, uh, now we've seen some, as far as the impact scores, we saw impact scores rolled out from last uh, month when the South Conference had their matches. Now, we're going to see things even out a little bit because now we have more races, um, different players that are going to come out. We have injuries. For instance, Bradley Hansen from the... Uh, from the Palms. She has been nursing an elbow injury. She hasn't been able to do really anything up her body. So that's going to affect her impact score moving on through today and the rest of the season. Yeah, definitely. And it's going to be really interesting to see how the North stacks up to the South, considering that they don't have any impact scores yet. We've only seen the South play. This is the first time that we're seeing the North play this season. Yeah, for sure. Um, they'll, their, their impact score will even out come the end of the season as far as north and south. But as far as the play, players, we're going to see that level out a little bit. Um, some players, if, if teams are short on players, you'll actually see them with a higher impact score because there's less players to go around in the respective movements, depending on the race. If you haven't seen anything about our impact scores yet, you can find it on the Florida Grid League website or on our Instagram page for more information. Yeah, absolutely. Follow the Florida Grid League on IG or the FGL.com for more information. And of course, as we always say, smash that bell on YouTube. That way you can be alerted to all the matches coming up throughout the day and the season. And we are moments away from our ringer point, our home ringer point, which like is nine muscle-ups. Sorry, go ahead. It looks like they're just adjusting the equipment for the muscle-ups to make sure everything's even. Safety first is one of our values as the Florida Grid League. Yeah, absolutely. Got to have the rings even. Everything's even for both teams. Um, let's see what else we have going on here as far as upcoming. Now, after the ringer point, we're going to move on to the echo we haven't talked too much about the echo we see it here and there um, echo match is something that 
or excuse me, the Echo Race, it's it's basically the reason for the name. It runs back to back. Um, you run the race, 45 seconds later, you run it again. There's no there's no break. So uh, very interesting, good name for it. We'll see what happens there. Um, the Echo Race is usually where people start to get burnt out. That's usually when you have a lot of players going in, doing a lot of reps, 45 second rest, you do it all again. Yep, yep. So that's sure. where strategy really comes into play. So you make sure your key players don't get too burnt out during that echo. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes you'll see that. You'll see one team take the first race, uh, the first half of the echo, and then the other team takes the other half. Or depending on how it works, you might see a bonus flag because maybe the other team sees a weakness. You know, that's another thing with this ringer point. The teams, the home team chooses the first ringer point, which was the Sharks today for this uh, nine ring muscle ups. And then we have an away ringer point, which was chosen by the Palms. Both teams trying to choose with some sort of strategy. We don't know what that might be. Um, you know, and then we may see a bonus flag. Both teams have one bonus flag per match. Uh, that bonus flag, when it's thrown, will add one additional point that can be taken by whoever takes that race. And it's definitely interesting to see who uses the bonus flag on the second echo. Like, hey, we really came far ahead on the first echo, so we might as well just throw the bonus flag now. 100%. I think that's like a super safe bet to throw that bonus flag because you really don't want the other team to be able to take advantage and take those points away from you because you will not have another yep. opportunity in that match to throw it again. Yeah, we saw that in week number one, actually. I think it was with the breakers. They... Uh, they, they didn't actually throw the flag, but Alan and I had some discussions about it. They, they smashed in one of the echoes, and then they, it was quite clear they were going to take the second race. They did, but they didn't throw the bonus flag. Awesome. So we are one minute away now. Uh, officially, the score, three to three. So the Palms did take that last race. All things are knotted up. 3-3, we're about 40 seconds, and we're going to send you for that ringer point. Now, don't go anywhere. This race is very, very fast. Don't blink. And if you're watching currently on screen, that is our MC, Kendrick. Always bringing the energy to the grid floor. 20 seconds. We are about 15 seconds away. We're going to bring our view to both sides. There it is. Cody Schaefer and Quentin Ambrosio. And we are off. These gentlemen sprinting to the rings. Now, you're going to see something with both of them. Very high skilled in gymnastics. You will find that they're not going to go with your typical... Uh, ring muscle up. This is a butterfly ring muscle up. Extremely high skill. Brought to you by Sky Hill USA. Both teams, one rep apiece. We'll see who's going to come off those rings and sprint. Ambrosio. Wow. Ambrosio with the Naruto run. He did have the Naruto run. It may have cost him. It was super close. I don't think that Cody Schaefer was able to catch up, but it was maybe a second or two that separated them. So unofficially, that went to the Sharks, and we'll hear back with our referees in a moment. I'm ready, brother. <laughs> Are you ready, brother? I'm ready, brother. Click in it in three, two, one, click. So workout is, I go, you go. It's gonna be 10 reps of two movements and then max effort. We're gonna go 10 wall balls, 10 toast bar, and then with the remaining time of the minute, we're doing as many max handstand shoulder taps as we can until the minute hits. On the next round, 10 handstand shoulder taps, 10 wall balls, and then max toast bar. <laughs> Then one more round, movements rotate again, 10 toes to bar, 10 handstand shoulder walks, and then the max effort movement is wall balls. So there's gonna be a change in the max effort every round. This is scored by max reps in total, Go. all three. 10 heavy wall balls. Nine, 10, 12, 10. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, ten seconds. Three, two, one. Forty-one. Why are you so fast like that? <laughs> I am. Woo! Max handstands. I got forty-one tapper doodles. I think we picked wrong elements. <laughs> 
race. Race. We drink our element. Time to uh, hydrate. Big goal of mine is to share my story, to inspire others. Once I got back to the States, during uh, hard chemotherapy rounds, I was back in remission, but now this time, I needed to have a bone marrow transplant. After another round of chemotherapy, I then endured a fungal infection that was going to my brain. Very uh, close call. Had five surgeries in six days. But I battled through, fought through, and uh, survived. Made it to my bone marrow transplant. Took about 11 months for my blood to start reproducing again. You know, through that time, I still continued to train. I continued striving to just be the best I can be and, and do the best that my body could do. So I preach health and fitness because it saved my life, not once, but twice. I will continue to tell my story on why I eat the way I eat. Every day, you know, I'm eating clean. Carnivore snacks, you know, it's just legit salt and your protein, and, and that's it. They all taste great. I look forward to snacking on them every day. Being a busy dad, I get to snack and not forget to eat uh, while I'm taking care of my 14-month-old son. So carnivore snacks is great. I definitely highly recommend it. Folks, welcome back. We are getting set up and are actually ready to rock on our Echo Race. Now, if you're just joining us, the Echo is, excuse me, the Echo. One player may be accumulating reps according to the designated number of element repetitions at their station. So the way this is going to work, bringing it up here, we have 12 repetitions in quadrant number one. The men's bar height is 65 pounds, uh, 65 inches, and the ladies' bar height is 45 inches. The D ball is 150 pounds for both of them. Gentlemen will put it over the high bar, ladies over the lower bar. Then they will move on to 10 repetitions in quadrant number two of a triple touch. That is a toe to bar, a chest to bar into a bar muscle up for each element. Then, in quadrant number three, we have eight repetitions of toes to ring into a back uprise. And finally finishing with a barbell complex. Ten repetitions in quadrant four. Barbell is 175 pounds, shared between males and females. For the males, it's a clean plus two thrusters. And for the ladies, it is a clean plus two shoulder to overhead. Now we'll head out to the competition floor to the match floor and the grid where everything is set up and we're getting ready to send these players in about 35 seconds. Now, once again, with this echo race, they're gonna go through all of the movements that I just went with you, went over with you. Once completed, 
There is no transition time. They will go back to the start with 45 seconds and do everything over again, as we talked about earlier. And here we go. We are 10 seconds out. We've got Gomez, or I'm sorry, on your screen, Washington, okay, Gomez and Jody Kennedy for the Sharks. So as you can see, the ladies are going over that 45-inch bar, the gentlemen over the 65-inch bar with a 150-pound yoke. That is Jay Fresh and Jay Melian for the Palms. Now, once again, these teams can substitute. Washington did substitute in for Fresh. Gomez now tapping in for Shappy. Shappy out on the grid, and that is Kennedy wrapping up for the Sharks. So it looks as if the Sharks have snuck ahead. Shappy working on those triple touches. That is a toe to bar to chest to bar to ring, uh, bar muscle up. Standing patiently, waiting to come in. Number 16, that's Chelsea Raineri. She is actually a gymnast, former college gymnast, who's able to do most mid and high level gymnastics, as you can see. And then let's see, we've got Riley Hansen for the Palms, also out on the grid. As previously mentioned, she has been dealing a little bit with an elbow injury, so it's nice to see that she's able to get out there and help the team. And then it looks like we have Sebastian Alvarez. He is out there. They've got, for the Palms, they've got just a few reps remaining, two reps. And the Sharks have four reps. So now the Sharks, although they have headed into quadrant number two ahead of the Palms, they are actually trailing. They're having an issue getting these reps. So they are still four reps shy, and the Palms have one triple touch to go. Heather Hudson grabbing onto the rings. She is ready as soon as that is done. She is going now. These are toes to ring to back up rise. And it looks like Nally for the Sharks is gonna finish up. And Ambrosia holding in a pause formation. Wow. All right, so Cody Schaefer and Ambrosia, the two gentlemen that you saw in the ringer point, are now neck and neck going for those toe to back uprise. And it, one rep remaining. Wow. Ambrosia flying around the grid. And that's leans for. Nimchek. Both teams, you can see both of them going through these movements. There's the Sharks, two thrusters. It's a clean plus two thrusters for the gentlemen and a clean plus two shoulder to overhead for the ladies. Five reps remaining for both teams. They are neck and neck. There's a minute and 20 seconds on the overall time. Who is going to take it? Four reps remaining for both teams. Presley going to continue for the Palms and leans for the Sharks. Nimchek. Both teams and the Palms will take that race unofficially winning the first round of the Echo. And the Sharks also finishing under the cap. Unofficially, the Palms have taken the first half of the Echo. Now, we are going to literally 30 seconds from now run this thing back again. What are your thoughts? The Sharks uh, got behind because of Chelsea Ranieri. Had a little bit of a struggle on those toes to bar, double touch, triple touches. Yeah. But it looks like Quentin Ambrosia was trying, was able to get them back up to speed almost exactly there. They just struggled a little bit on the barbell. 
Yeah, absolutely. That was that's very true. Yeah. They, uh, so Rainieri, uh, a college gymnast, so we know she's capable. Maybe hasn't had the opportunity to touch those triple touches too much. Looks like there was a little bit of communication error, also between her, Shappy, the ref. Uh, yeah, so that being a, said, this is a movement that's special to the Florida Grid League, also. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now we're about 10 seconds away. They're going to run this thing back. Let's see if the Palms can take two in a row. Okay, there looks like there's a little bit of an equipment issue. So while we're uh, we're just hanging out, we're gonna have them, the, ref, the head referee is just checking with everybody. There seems to have been an equipment issue. They wanna make sure everybody's on the same page. Safety first is our values. Coach Cody Landrum speaking with one of the head referees. Here on your screen, that's Jody Kennedy, Nick Shappy. They both started the key ball over the yoke. So it uh, looks like the equipment is good to go. We are about five seconds away, and we are gonna hit this second half of Echo. All right, they're off. Kennedy for the Sharks, and Gomez, and it looks like Presley and Placencia for the Palms. Now they can go about these 12 reps any way they want. The gentlemen can do it all. They can go back and forth, they can walk under. As you, there you go, it looks like Kennedy and the, the hand has gone up. Referee's hand is up, so the Sharks are just ahead by two, looks like two, three repetitions. Palms having an issue, something going on with them. Communication, whatever it is. We are once again watching the Sharks head into quadrant number two with the lead. Now this happened before, and at some point the wheels came off during these triple touches. Hansen, well we got Sam Nally for the Sharks, and let's go over to, yep, there's the Palms, and we've got Briley Hansen once again trying to help as much as she can with that elbow injury. Shappy for the Sharks, also able to get up. And Nally, and that is Sebastian Alvarez on your screen. New sign for the Palms. The hand is up for the Palms, only five repetitions. So once again, the Palms were behind going from the D-ball over the yoke, getting into this triple touch, and have managed to get several reps ahead of the Sharks. Two reps left for the Palms, three reps remaining for the Sharks. Once again, the Palms edging out the Sharks in that triple touch. Heather Hudson now headed to the rings for the ring to back uprise. She did catch a fault there. Cody Schaefer taking over. Schaefer and Nally. Nally for the Sharks trying to wrap up still. They have two reps remaining. Let's go to the Palms. Yes, Palms, couple reps remaining on those toes to back uprise. So once again, in this echo race, they have caught up on that triple touch. They are still struggling over there with the Sharks. There it is. So now Ambrosia for the Sharks, trying to play catch up once again. I think that's going to be an impossible feat. We will see. Washington for the Palms with that clean and two thrusters. That barbell, 205 pounds. The ladies sharing the same bar as the gentlemen. For the ladies, it is one clean plus two shoulder to overhead. For the gentlemen, the one clean and two thrusters. Both sharing that bar. Now, we have not seen a referee's hand go up. But we've got... Graham and Leans. Graham and 
Orleans. Washington trying to finish up. Referee's hand is up. One last thruster. Washington finished. Palms have taken the race. Let's go over to the Sharks as they try to finish their last couple of reps. They still have two reps remaining and 40 seconds. So it's very important that they finish this as there is still a point differential that they'll be dealing with come at the end of this season, which could help their chances as far as playoff placement. And it looks like the Sharks will finish with just a, about 15 seconds to spare. That was your echo race, back to back. The Palms took them. The Sharks came out strong. They, they, they were able to manhandle that yoke over the 65 inch bar, over the 45 inch bar. Uh, the, the, the Palms were having issues with that. But then you get over to that triple touch. Although they have a college gymnast for the Sharks, still struggling with that triple touch. Uh, as far as making sure that you're fluent with the, the toe, the chest, into the muscle up. Palm showing that they're excellent with their gymnastics, even with Riley Hansen with that injury, uh, and then maybe able to come back. Yeah, the Sharks do have a lot of new players this year, almost a completely rebuilt team, except for a few, a few key players. Um, it just looked like because of all the substitutions that they had to make and the little bit of... Element's been awesome. Element, 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 element. I've been using Element basically every day. I love it. I was, you know, back to working out and wanted to make sure that I stayed in hydrated because that's so important for your supply it was a game changer for me because all through high school and college i would always cramp this generally comes from that mineral imbalance having element tea you know in my training bag keeps me hydrated it's phenomenal it rejuvenates me in the workout it's what my body craves and it's what it needs after sweating so much it's definitely helped me get through really long tough workouts and just give me the energy that i need in order to keep pushing through I'm a body weight specialist for the For Laurel Alliance. We have all kind of body weight movements, rope lines, bow jumps, pistols, double touches. These shoes are definitely gonna be on my feet during the next matches. Since the grip on the sole is so good, I feel super safe doing the rope climbs, like um, having my feet super secure on the sprints, all kind of movements like that. Folks, we are back. We apologize for that mistake that. earlier. We had a little technical difficulty, but we are back. Um, getting ready for the ladder race. Before we get to that, well, let's talk about what we have with the ladder. Brief overview. Maximum of 10 points per player. Teams will accumu accumulate as many points as possible through the successful lifts. Now, as you can see on your screen, one point for the lightest weight, two points for the next one, three, and then, of course, four points for the heaviest weight and quadrant number four. The point value is equal to the quadrant number. It's one lift attempt per bar, and as a player, you can skip any bar if it helps. Um, if the final ladder score difference is 10 or more, then the losing team does not get that extra point. So two points will go to the winner. If they win by more than 10, then zero points go to the loser of this race. 
Let's talk about what the, is going on in this ladder. Today we have a complex, that, hence the name, Hang Loose for our match format. This references our ladder. Snatch plus Hang Snatch, Ga gather, uh, excuse me, going up in weight. For the men, quadrant number one, 175 pounds, quadrant two, 195, quadrant three, 215, and quadrant four, 235 pounds. For the ladies, 105 pounds, quadrant number one, 125 in quadrant number two, 140 in quadrant number three, and finishing in quadrant number four with 155 pounds. Each quadrant, as you can see on your right, has an element value equal to the quadrant number as well. This will again affect the impact score as we've talked about. Now we're about 45 seconds away. I wanted to talk about real quick something with uh, the ringer point that we saw earlier, the nine ring muscle ups, Ambrosio, Cody Schaefer. I said that that was, uh, Ambrosio took that race by one second. I was wrong. He took it by one tenth of a second. That race was 27. Sorry, I've got my number here. 27.21 seconds for Ambrosio, 27.34 seconds for Schaefer. So extremely close. I, I, you know, to be honest, I think Ambrosio could have blown it just doing that Naruto run through. <laughs> so maybe next time less messing around, but he still was able to take it. I love it. I no love his style. Yeah, for sure. But hey, if that would have cost him, that would have been ugly. Oh yeah, definitely. All right, so we're about few minutes out, just doing our last equipment checks, making everything sure everything is right. Uh, so we're heard from our MC. They do have exactly one minute. All the equipment is good to go. Referees are heading out onto the grid. Currently, the South Beach Palms leading the Sharks eight to seven. No teams have thrown their bonus flag yet. Still a super tight race. What I've noticed is with these super high, high skill teams, it's always super tight until that sprint relay. Here we go. All right, these teams are off. We've got number 15, Valerie Gunning for the Palms and Placencia, I'm sorry, Placencia for the Palms and Gunning for the Sharks. So each of those ladies, not a problem, able to get that bar. Yep. Placencia got her first and she's able to lock out. So she was able to go through all four quadrants and gunning also. Nimchek and Presley out on the grid. Presley for the palms in quadrant number two. That barbell, 195 pounds. Nimchek, 195, not a problem. Presley now in quadrant number four. 235 pounds, he's got it. Nimchek, quadrant three. Also locking it out. Nimchek's going to take his time. And now we got Heather Hudson for the Palms out in quadrant number two. That barbell, 125 pounds. Wow, Nimchek, we saw that. 235 pounds in quadrant number four. Heather Hudson has left the grid. We've got Jay Fresh in quadrant number one. And Rainieri. No, Palumbo. Sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. That is Jay Fresh on your screen. He was able to lock that out. That's it in Kennedy. Now we got, oh, from your, on your screen there. There we go, there's Kennedy in quadrant number four. She's going for that second. There it is. So we're, once again, they're taking a snatch from the ground and then a hang snatch. It can be a squat or power. This is Hansen in quadrant three. And Briley's not able to lock that one out. With one minute, 40 seconds 
There's still a minute and 40 seconds. These teams only have four minutes to send all of their players out onto the grid. And that is Joaquin Graham. And let's see on Tarafa. This is Graham now. Graham in quadrant four. 235, he's got it. Tarafa, his barbell, 215 pounds in quadrant three. He's able to also stand it up. He's going to head off the grid. And Leans. Leans has got it in quadrant number three. Placencia. Placencia in quadrant. Is it C chord? I apologize. C chord. Looking at the wrong numbers. Now, she was able to lock that out. Let's see who comes out. For the Palms, we've got Washington in quadrant number one. Washington in quadrant number two, going for his hang. No good, so he will exit. This is Sam Nally for the Sharks. This is your 2022 MVP on the screen in quadrant number three with that 140 pound bar. She's going to skip quadrant number four. All right, and Shappy. We'll see if he gets credit. I do not believe he will get credit for that. They're going to count up the scores, and we're going to come back with you. I was actually starting to make videos towards the end of high school to try to go to college for gymnastics, and I ended up having shoulder surgery. I tore my labrum, and that was it for gymnastics. A friend got me into CrossFit, and then when I heard about GRID, the original one, I did everything I could to try to be part of the league. I use a lot of grips, and these are just my favorite pair that I've ever touched. With the way these are just sewn on and with that padding, it's a whole new dimension in terms of grips for CrossFit. And when you lock onto that bar like you're supposed to with these things, they just lock you in. These are probably the only grips I'll use. My name is Nick Habish. I am the coach and a player on the Southwest Florida Sharks. I was born in Miami, Florida. I was raised in Miami, New York, Connecticut, kind of all over the place. I went back to Miami for high school and then I joined the Army from there. During high school, uh, I realized I was not super invested in school. It wasn't something I was looking forward to. It wasn't something I wanted to continue with. Probably wasn't mature enough for that. I was in seventh grade when 9-11 happened. And that's something that had kind of like lived on my shoulder uh, over those last couple of years. And when it came time to, to finish up high school, it was like, what, what am I gonna do? I, I figured I can go waste a bunch of time and money in college, or I can go do something that at the time felt like, uh, like really important. For my time in the service, probably the most important lesson I've learned is like teamwork matters, relying on other people around you helping to build them up. Um, all of that matters in like the corporate world or the athletic world or anywhere else. And very few people understand that as well as military members. And I think the rest of the population could really benefit from understanding that. Fitness helped me a lot when I was in the army because obviously I had to be in shape. Uh, I was in the infantry. So, you know, that's exactly what you think it is. You have to be in really good shape all the time or your life is at risk. Once I got out, uh, fitness has been really good for my mental health. It's kept me centered. It's kept me engaged. It's kept me motivated. It also helps me have like a shared bond with other people. If I could give anyone any advice, especially if they were like getting out of the military or, or they're in any other kind of like fraternal organization, like a first responder job, I would say definitely get involved in fitness. Get involved in like recreational, like group fitness. Go find a gym where people have similar goals and they want to work towards things like you do because having a bunch of people like that around you is really beneficial mentally. I'd like to shout out my fiance, Stephanie Boyer, for uh, coming up here and supporting us every single match and putting up with me having to be at practice and dealing with all the players all the time. Do it! <laughs> Folks, we are back. Now, while the judges are tabulating the score from our ladder race, let's talk about our upcoming ringer point. Chosen by the away team, the Palms, they have chosen five snatches. Now, the interesting thing about this ringer point is men and women can go against each other. 
for today, we have exactly that. For the Sharks, we have Nimchek. He's going to go for five snatches at 225 pounds. And for the Palms, they are sending out Placencia for five snatches at 150 pounds. Once again, this is a super fast race. And so we're listening in as they are revealing the scores for the Sharks and the Palms in that latter race. All right, and official scoring from the latter race, 57 for the Sharks, 43 for the Palms. Now what that means is, Two points go to the Sharks, and because they beat the Palms by more than 10 points, zero points will now go to the Palms, rather than one. So typically you would find that one would go, uh, if, if it was if it was 57-47 or 57-48, they would receive one point. This could be crucial come the end of the season, we'll see. All right, once again, Nimchek and Placencia getting ready to come out onto the grid. Five snatches. Here we go. 225 pounds for Nimchek's bar, 150 pounds for Placencia. Both players on your screen. And they are off. Nimchek on your screen. Now you can see both of them. Five snatches from the ground. Must be fully locked out overhead. Placencia looks like she's got Nimchek by just about one rep. Let's see who's gonna cross that finish line. Wow. So Nimchek was behind by just a bit, but that final rep slowed Placencia down just a bit, and he was able to get out from under that bar and cross through that finish line. It was a matter of reaching that last little hip extension for Placencia That's that right. lost it for. Yeah, for Nimchek sure. Nimchek really sprinted to that finish line. Right. For sure. So, unofficially, Sharks take that ringer point. That was chosen by the Palms. So they were kind of hoping that they were going to send somebody out who was going to take that race. Um, you know, it didn't didn't work in their favor this time. No, it did not. But there's still time, and there's still two bonus flags that have not been played. We are relaxing your results. Josh and Daniel here. We've been with the Grid League since about five years now, and we love being part of the team, taking care of the team. Their well-being means a lot to us, so we're always in the sideline, making sure they're okay. You know, we specialize in everything that has to do with sports, massage, sports recovery, stretching. So what we do is basically help them maximize their potential and help them prevent injury as well. The recovery aspect, uh, we speed up the recovery time, help athletes gain, regain uh, range motion that they've lost due to injury or overuse, overtraining. Pretty much just keeping people as healthy as possible is what our goal is. Yeah, especially with grip, you know, it's very intense and it's very fast. So when we improve their mobility, their flexibility, they're obviously going to perform at a higher level. So with them, that's mainly our main concern is to get them flexible so they're faster at everything they do. Unlike American football or baseball, where positions are very clearly defined with rules specific to them, grid league positions are more general. Think of it as a spectrum with a four-foot gymnast on one end and a 400-pound strongman on the other, with every possible size, shape, and skill set focus filling in the middle. Roles on the grid have a lot of crossover from position to position, and there are many possible combinations that will yield a great team. Grid league has three primary player positions or roles on the team. Utility players generally have a wide range of abilities and end up with a diverse set of assignments on the grid. Utility players, although often assigned more total work than specialists, will still focus on their best movements as their means to contribute to the team. The strength specialist role often involves heavier assignments and depending on the player's background, may be even more focused to individual types of strength movement such as Olympic weightlifting or strongmen. 
Most of the super high skill movements like backward roll to support and deficit, freestanding handstand push-ups are performed by bodyweight specialists. That said, there are several bodyweight specialists that mainly focus on more basic movements, but for big sets and fast cycle rates. Many are gymnasts as well, but even some of the best do not have gymnastics backgrounds, such as former MVP Paul Lays. Learn more about the sport of Gridley at thatgl.com slash learn. folks we are back with you just coming off the away ringer point po chosen by the palms but was taken by the sharks currently the sharks are leading the palms 11 to 9. we're going to take a look at our jack and jill race coming up jack and jill one female and one male out on the grid at any given time players can substitute at any time and they're going to be chipping away At today, 15. Oh, we've got the partner forward. Sorry, the Jack and Jill. As we said, one male, one female. There are three station of body weight elements. Now we're 30 seconds away. Talking about the Jack and Jill, they will have 15 ring forward rolls, 10 deck to pull over, and five deck to backflip. So that's essentially a burpee into a backflip for all of you people who are newer to the grid or maybe out in the CrossFit world or the functional fitness world. All right, so we've got Nally and Ambrosio for the Sharks and Alvarez and Heather Hudson out for the Palms. They are currently working to chip away at 15 ring forward rolls. So essentially hanging on a ring dip, doing a full forward roll and then showing support at the top. So you must fully extend at the end and press it out as Ambrosia just did there. So now he's gonna switch out. This is Sebastian Alvarez for the Palms. And Ambrosia now still working on these. Both teams, we've seen no hands. Now we see a hand for a judge up for the Sharks. The Sharks have five reps remaining, four reps now. Alvarez making pretty clean work of these forward rolls. He's going to wrap up for the palms. And it looks like Ambrosia is going to take a fault there. So the palms have snuck ahead. Boss for the palms. And Cody Schaefer. Is that Cody Schaefer? That is Cody Schaefer. All right, out there on the grid. It looks like Ambrosio and McNally are still struggling on those forward rolls. Yes, and you can see that the coach is freaking out for the Sharks. He was stepping out onto the grid. They got him back. They pulled out Chelsea Rainieri, former college gymnast, to complete the rest of the reps. All right, and let's see now the palms. Palms have moved forward. They only have those deck to backflip to go. Sharks playing catch up. Communication error with the palms on the other side. That's Nally and Graham for the Sharks. There we go, Briley Hansen hitting her backflip, going rep for rep with Sebastian Alvarez. And the Palms finish up as we watch the Sharks try to finish their last remaining three reps. There are 15 Palms. seconds left on that clock for the Sharks. Yes. So 10 seconds remaining. What that means is the Palms have finished this race unless Sam Nally can knock out three more backflips in the next two seconds. Unfortunately, she will not. So, the Palms have taken this race, taking two points, the Sharks taking zero points, and we will be right back. My name is Dr. Michael Thomas, and I have a private practice called Acme Spine and Orthopedics. The best part of my job is treating patients that have significant amount of pain due to spinal problems and treating them surgically and having them come back to my office and feeling much better. 
I think the reason why patients come to me is that I've done a spinal fellowship at the University of Miami and that gave me an edge to be able to perform minimally invasive surgery appropriately. Also our practice has an extremity orthopedic surgeon so if someone comes in with a shoulder injury or a knee injury, elbow, wrist, whatever, we can treat that as well. The best way to contact us is by phone. Our office is always available and we look forward to getting you better. Grid is like super fast fitness and it's really unique because it's guys and girls on the same team and unlike other sports, you don't have to be good at everything. You get to showcase your skills and what you're really good at. A lot of people confuse CrossFit and Grid and think they're the same thing when really they're very different. Uh, some of the movements are similar and they might look like, oh, you're doing the same exercises, why isn't this CrossFit? But with CrossFit, you have to be good at everything. If you want to be competitive, you can't have any holes in your game. You have to be really strong, you have to be really fast, you have to be really good at gymnastics and have a really good engine. But with, with grid, it's, it's totally opposite. You can literally just be really strong. You can suck at burpees and a 20 minute Metcon, that doesn't matter. Your only job at grid is to be really strong and move a barbell really fast or to be really gymnasty and be a ninja on the, on the rig or on rings or whatever, um, or just be someone like me who really likes burpees and likes to do a lot of that stuff. You know, like I'll never be the strongest or the gymnastiest, but I have, I have a decent engine and I can move really quick. So for me, it's good because I get to do the stuff that nobody likes to do, like the box jumps and the burpees and that kind of stuff, whereas my partners will save me and they're going to do the, the back rolls to the four and the crazy stuff on the rings that I have no business doing. Uh, but together, that's how, we, that's how we win matches because we all kind of come together and do the stuff that we're good at. I love grid because, especially after college of being a collegiate athlete, I get to be a team athlete again. But the really cool thing about grid is I get to compete against guys and beat guys at stuff. And they see us as equals. There's been times where guys have to go against girls and they're like, oh crap, I don't want to go against her. She's really good at this movement or whatever. Um, and that's, you don't see that anywhere else. It's usually a, a soccer team has all girls or all guys. And it's like, girls are really good at one thing in this sport. Guys are really good at one thing in that sport. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you are. You're just, you're a human playing on this team and you have a specific role that's important. And, and that's really cool to see, especially for women who are, who, th who think that they can't play, uh, you know, sports with guys or whatever. And they see us on the grid like, wait a minute, they're sharing a barbell with a guy? Like they're going against a guy and they're, they're keeping up or beating that guy? Like that's just so cool and really empowering that we just get to feel as important as, as our counterparts. And it's just, we, we're all needed to be on a team in order for the team to win. Before you start doing butterfly ring muscle-ups, a couple things we should have under our belt as a prerequisite. If you can't string together five to eight regular ring muscle-ups, probably shouldn't be starting to perform this movement yet. Also, if we can't do maybe two to three strict ring muscle-ups, this is another thing that we should probably hold off on until we build that prerequisite strength so that you can do this movement safely. We can do the butterfly ring muscle-up two different ways. You can start from the top of the movement or you can go back into the dip before you reach out into that extension pattern. But the goal here is creating a length tension relationship with the rings and your body. So what you don't wanna do is come down and see the slack in the ring. You see the slack and you let out the slack. What that's gonna do is at the bottom, it's gonna kinda of jerk you and put a lot of stress through those shoulders. What we want to do, whether you're moving from the top or here, is push those rings away and keep that tension without any slack on those rings so that you can get in that nice tight Superman position before you go back into that next muscle up. If you do this, it will actually make the muscle up easier because you will start swinging in a pattern that's gonna basically set you up into that next muscle up. But if you lose that tension on those straps, you're gonna start swinging all over the place and you're gonna feel really jerky at the bottom. We are back. We still have a few minutes before we kick off our triad. Recapping what we've seen today. 
Um, in this la in the last race, we had the Jack and Jill. So what we saw is 15 ring forward rolls, uh, 10 deck to pull over, and five deck to backflip. Now. The Sharks came out hot. They were looking good. They have Ambrosia, who happens to be a fantastic gymnast, uh, great with the gymnastics, but they were struggling, extending, and pressing out on the rings for that first movement. With that, the door was open. The Palms took it. Um, zero points ended up going to the Sharks for that race. Yeah, so it looks like the Sharks um, had less of a diverse team as far as gymnastics go. It looks like a lot of the work was going to Nally and Ambrosio. Yes, for sure. And what I noticed for the Palms, Sebastian Alvarez, he was there for pretty much the whole time. He, he may have tagged in or out here and there to have Cody Schaefer give a hand uh, on the deck to pull over. That was the 10, yeah, deck to pull over. Uh, but then came back out, was able to, with Briley Hansen, with Briley Hansen, knock out those uh, deck to backflip. And that was it. So Very now we're gonna get all appearance. set up. We're ready for the female triad. Looking at the female and male triad, this will be races nine and 10. This is gender specific. So we're gonna start with the ladies. Each station must be completed before moving on to the next, and any player that's out on the grid can work at any station. All right, now what we're looking at with the triad. First movement is double kettlebell overhead lunges. That will be past the Q3, so quadrant number three line, 60 feet. 53 pounds in each hand for the men, 35 in each hand for the ladies. Well, let's just stick with the ladies for now. For the ladies, 35 pounds in each hand. They're gonna go the length of the grid to the third line. Then they have six 10-inch deficit handstand push-ups, 12 35-pound kettlebell ground to overheads. Then they have four six-pound med ball bar muscle-ups, and then finishing with 16 double kettlebell hang clusters. You can also see that the element values are assigned on the right side of each of those. Now we're about 15 seconds away from sending off the ladies. Then we will talk about the gentlemen and the weight that they will be using in their triad. So we have for the palms, looks like Secord, Hansen, and I can't see the third lady out on the grid, but they are going to pass us in just a moment. That is Amber Bost. All right, the there South you Beach go. Palms. Amber Bost. And Sam Nally. Jody Kennedy. And that was Gunning, just left the grid, Gunning. replaced by Chelsea Rainieri. Awesome, awesome. So. That puts the Sharks just slightly ahead. The Palms have just now finished their lunges, so they could not get started until that third lane was done. So as you can see for the Palms, all three trying to chip away at those deficit handstand push-ups. Substitutions can happen anytime, but once again, you cannot move on to the next movement until all three of those stations are complete. We have, now, Na we have Nally and Gunning and Kennedy working on those those kettlebell overheads. Yes, and the ladies over there for the pump still trying to finish up as the Sharks rip away at these kettlebell ground to overhead. Now those kettlebells for the ladies, 35 pounds in each hand. They're gonna move those kettlebells. They have to bring those to the next quadrant for the double kettlebell hang clusters which come after what you're about to see. So, Palms having a communication issue. Let's going back over to the Sharks. Sharks chipping away. They've got four muscle ups with a six pound med ball between their legs. There's a fumble with the med ball from the Sharks, but they're still ahead of the South Beach Palms. Yeah, still way ahead. Communication, Palms are breaking down over there. Sharks ripping away. There we go. Now we're looking at 
the palms. They've got one rep in one lane. They still have, we, have, we don't even see the hands up for the judges in the other two lanes. So back with the Sharks, trying to finish up one lane of muscle-ups. Once they finish these muscle-ups, they're going to be able to go to their fourth quadrant. And they did. So now we're with the Sharks. Back to the Sharks. They're going for those 16 double kettlebell hang clusters. Once again, 35 pounds in each hand. So hang cluster means that kettlebell will go between the legs into the clean position, full squat, and then thrusting to full extension overhead. Sharks have a very comfortable lead against the Palms. They, they are do. not stressed about getting those things overhead at all. No, I mean, the main thing they need to do here is just not take any faults, knock out the 16 reps and cross that finish line. Hands have just gone up for the Sharks. They've got five reps remaining. And Heather Hudson on our screen trying to wrap up. There are 30 seconds remaining for the South Beach Palms, trying to chip away at those kettlebell uh, Yep, kettlebell, you got it, double kettlebell hang clusters. 20 seconds remaining. So what we want to see here, are the palms going to be able to get that extra point and finish under the cap? There are a ton of reps remaining, not looking good. They're Heather going for a substitution, it. yep. So it looks as if that's not going to happen. The Sharks have taken this race. The palms have and not time. finished the race under the cap. Two points unofficially going to the Sharks, zero going to the the palms and we're going to come right back with you as we prepare for the male triad three two one go working out is hard working the clock shouldn't be introducing flex timer the interval training timer controlled completely from your smartphone instantly and easily connect and take control of your LED gym clock. Choose from five popular training modes like rounds, intervals, Tabata, Imam, or the standard timer. It's easy. Choose your workout type, set your interval structure along with your durations, and you're ready to go. You can count up or count down, switch on the fly. You'll love the large, clear LED display visible throughout the gym. Save time and plan your workout in advance, or save your favorites for instant recall. With an over 100 foot range, you're not tethered to the clock. Move throughout the room, and even control the timer around corners and through walls. For personal training, link up your HR monitor to give your workout an extra punch. Go hands-free with Apple Watch or Pebble, and you'll never be searching for the remote again. Ditch the remote with the Flex Timer from Jim Next. The peachy shorts are squat proof. They hold up for burpees. Hands down, they're my favorite thing to wear. Squat test. I think we're good to go. These leggings are to die for. So stretchy, super comfy. They look cute, they feel good. They don't pinch on the sides. The legs are always loose enough and they don't dig in. They don't move, which I appreciate because I'm one of the curvier girls. I like them. They're great. Love everything about them. I'm really digging the peachy. I've loved wearing peachy athletics this year. Looking peachy. Cook less and live more with rebuilt meals. Fresh, nutritious meals. Chef prepared and perfectly portioned to help you hit your macros. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning. No commitments and no contracts. Rebuilt Meals offers plans to satisfy any lifestyle. We offer gluten-free, dairy-free, and soy-free options. And the menu changes every week, so you'll never get bored. Let us do the cooking so you can do all the living. Visit RebuiltMeals.com and use promo code REBUILDREADY for 50% off your first order. A lot of people don't go to the doctor because they're afraid the doctor's going to say, stop crossfitting. We should never be our patient's limiting factor. Our job is to help our patients hit whatever goal they want to with no restrictions. And I think today's healthcare model doesn't allow that because your insurance will limit that. Being in an insurance-based clinic, a lot of times you get restricted on what you can treat, how much of it you can treat. And then half the time people are told, oh, well, it hurts when you do a hip and pull. Don't do those anymore. Rather than, hey, you know, 
let's find a way to resolve this so you can go back to doing that. You want to go talk to somebody who does those things and totally understands what you're doing rather than going to somebody who's never done any of those before and maybe understands biomechanics really well, but if they can't actually physically watch you do it, it's going to be really hard for them to fix that problem. So I would say, you know, if you're dealing with any kind of pain in the gym, we're the people to go And we are back, kicking off the male triad. We just watched the Lady Sharks take the palms in the female triad. Now we're gonna move on to the male triad. Let's tell you a little bit about that. Coming up for the men. Once again, gender specific, so we had the ladies. Now the gentlemen will go. Each station must be complete before moving on to the next, but any player that's out on the grid can complete any station. For the gentlemen, there are 40 double kettlebell overhead, uh, excuse me, there are double kettlebell overhead lunges across to quadrant number three. 53 pounds in each hand. Then they will move on to 10 inch deficit handstand pushups at six reps apiece. After that, 12 double kettlebell ground to overhead at 53 pounds. Then bar muscle ups with a med ball, six pound med ball. So four reps, or excuse me, six reps of a, with a six pound med ball. And then 16 double kettlebell hand clusters with that same 53 pound kettlebell in each hand. So we have for the palms, Fresh, Presley, and Washington. And for the Sharks, Nimchek, Shappy, and Gomez. These are your three players for each team that will begin. Once again, chipping away at the 40-foot double kettlebell overhead lunge. And we're off. Both teams starting with that overhead lunge. Let's take a look. We've got Presley, Washington, and Fresh for the Palms. And Shappy, Nimchek, and Gomez for the Sharks. Both teams substituting a few players. Once again, they can start on the next movement without the other players on the grid, but they cannot move on to the next movement until all three stations are complete. Now we are seeing these teams work on knocking out the 10 inch deficit handstand push-ups. And holy cow, the Sharks are uh, just a few reps ahead. Both teams knock those out extremely quickly. Presley, Alvarez, and it looks like Cody Schaefer that just tagged out Washington for the Palms. Now the Sharks bringing their kettlebells over to the fourth quadrant as they prepare to knock out their six bar muscle ups with that six pound med ball between their legs. This is the make or break portion of this race. We got if they can knock these out and get over to that kettlebell, they're going to likely take this entire race. We got Martin from the Southwest Florida Sharks already finished with his med ball muscle ups. One rep left for the Sharks and the Sharks are moving on to the fourth quadrant. South Beach Palms still at the, at the muscle ups. Yes, and looking at the Sharks, we've got Shappy, Graham, and Gomez chipping away at those 16 double kettlebell hand clusters, 53 pounds a piece in each hand. And looking over at the Palms, we've got Presley, Jay Fresh, and Cody Schaefer trying to play catch up. Now we're gonna watch for judges' hands to go up to see where these teams are. They've got about a five rep lead, the Sharks do, over the Palms. Hands are up 
Hands are up for the Sharks. So unless we see some sort of fault or major failure for the Sharks, this will likely go to the Palms. Two reps remaining for the Sharks. Gomez and Graham and Shappy. The Sharks have taken the male triad. Shappy laying it all out on the ground, back with the palms, trying to wrap up. Couple reps remaining, 30 seconds. Still want to get that extra point. Jay Fresh. Jay Fresh is able to knock it out. That's Cody Schaefer in the front of your screen. And unofficial. The Sharks have taken the male triad. The Palms were able to finish within the tie cap that time, though, so they will receive credit for that race. Yep, two points going to the Shark, one point going to the Palms. And we're going to get set up for our sprint late relay. Big shout out to our equipment provider today, Valor Fitness. All of the equipment that you see on this grid is from Valor Fitness. So looking ahead at the sprint relay, let's talk about the rules. Players must substitute or may substitute at any time except after performing the final repetition of any given element. Now after performing the final rep, they, the player must return to the start zone and complete a four point touch before sprinting all the way to the finish. Now once they cross the finish line, then the next player on their team can head out to the grid. You'll find four males and four females must finish these eight elements. Now, looking ahead at the elements for today, on the right of your screen, you'll see the element value pretty much dictates the difficulty. And we'll come back in just a few to go over those movements. Okay, so I'll tell you what, we're gonna go back to that sprint graphic, and that way I can go over these movements. Now, for the sprint relay, there are, it kicks things off with a six heavy D ball over the yoke. Now, it's 150 pound D ball over a 45 inch yoke. So it does not matter who does that, male or female. From there, two short rope climbs, starting at eight feet, climbing to 15. From there, they will have four toe to ring to back uprise. Then, a 150 pound D ball carry, all the way from the start line to quadrant number three and back, I'm sorry, from, from the start line to quadrant number three, back to the start and then through the finish. From there, they will have nine deck to pistol over the six inch pole. Nine kettlebell squat snatches at 53 pounds, six snatches at 200 pounds, and then finishing everything with two clean and jerks at 200 pounds. Now, the Palms have thrown their bonus flag. Currently, the Sharks are leading 15 to 12. So what that means is this sprint relay typically worth three points. This will add a fourth point, essentially, giving the match to whoever takes this race. Currently, once again, Sharks leading 15 to 12. Um, this normally worth three, gonna be the extra point. Palms have thrown it, so it's anybody's match. They've gone back and forth. Uh, a couple of times, the both teams took zero points on a few races, but pretty evenly matched coming into this sprint relay. Anything can happen here. So it looks like the Palms need the Sharks to completely not finish this race to win this match. Yeah, they gotta take it. We'll be right back. Sam Tobar, bring the back in. But Francisco...
right, party people, we are back with you. And we are heading into the final race of the match, recapping what we just spoke about. Sharks leading the Palms 15 to 12. The Palms have thrown their bonus flag, which means this race decides the match. Normally worth three points, which would tie it up. It would make it 15-15. This could essentially give the Palms the match 16 to 15 by taking a four point here at the relay. So they just need to win it outright. Whether or not the Sharks finish will not matter if they can win the race. So we're about 25 seconds away or so from these players kicking off. Looking what like they're like doing the last bit of equipment checks before they run the sprint relay, since this is going to be a very tight race and decides everything. Yeah, and the Palms coming out real strong. Um, Sharks also, the uh, they went back and forth the first two races of the match. They've actually, the first four races of the match, went uh, Sharks, Palms, Sharks, Palms. Um, so a lot of back and forth. You, Riley Hansen, another thing, you know, she was had an elbow injury, but she's been out on the grid, able to help her team out. Um, I did notice that the roster was a little bit more full for them. It was a little uh, just thin when it came to last year, uh, excuse me, last, last week, our first week of matches. Um, but they are out there now. Uh, they have... Sebastian Alvarez, who has been able to really help out a ton. Oh, yeah, definitely came out really strong. So a lot of enthusiasm. I can imagine they're going to be super fired up if they are able to pull out this sprint relay. All right, so we have heard from our MC that it is officially one minute until this final race. Now, it looks as if Presley will probably be starting and Shappy for Presley for the Palms and Shappy for the oh Shappy now took a step back. So we'll see what happens when this race kicks off. First thing they have is six heavy D balls over the oak. 150 pounds, 45 inches. All right, 10 seconds before the fireworks. And they're off. Presley for the Palms. And Graham for the Sharks. That is a 150 pound ball and a 45 inch yoke that they must lift it over. Substitutions so, for Sam Secord for the South Beach Palms and Natalie for the Sharks. Substituting, oh no, run it to the finish line. There right, we go. but so what you see there is the gentlemen came out, they knock out the first five reps of each. Then the ladies come and finish because likely those gentlemen you'll see again on the grid. If they finish that off, they would not have been able to come back out. Martin for the Sharks, knocking out those short rope climbs. Those short rope already. climbs, yep. Washington trying to catch up. Sorry. Quentin Ambrosio for the Southwest Florida Sharks, finishing off those toes to ring with black back uprises. Yep, that's right. Ambrosia knocked those out. Cody Schaefer trying to play catch up for the Palms. Ambrosia running off. Cody Schaefer with one rep remaining. He's good. He's going to head back for those four points of contact. Nick Shappy for the Sharks. He's brought it back to the start. Now he's got to go the entire length, 80 feet, with that 150 pound ball. He is sprinting with that thing. Jay doing the same thing for the South Beach Palms on the other side. Handing it to Briley Hansen to take it all the way to the finish line. And Rainieri, four reps remaining for those deck to pistol jump overs. They have a six inch height pole that they must do a burpee essentially, a pistol and jump over. So she has been cleared. Heather Hudson trying to ca play catch up. Yeah. 
And now, kettlebell squat snatch at nine reps, 53 pounds. For Valerie Gunning, knocking those out in the third quadrant, Heather Hudson just ran to the finish line for the South Beach Palms. Now we got Jessica Placencia coming up to the kettlebells to try to catch up to the Southwest Florida Sharks. That's it, and there's only one rep remaining for the Sharks. So she's got a little bit of work ahead of her. We'll see if she can make it happen. As Gunning crosses the finish, Nimchek will head out for the Sharks. And he is at that six snatches at 200 pounds. Placencia now crossing the finish line. Nimchek, only a few reps remaining. Presley now at the barbell for the Palms. Nimchek running to the finish line. Brett Presley still finishing off those snatches. And we have Kennedy running to finish off those two clean and jerks at 200 pounds. Wow, and Kennedy easily picking up that weight. Two clean and jerks, she does it. She's gonna sprint back to the start, four points of contact, and take her way right through the finish as we watch Jay Fresh try to get his final rep. And the Southwest Florida Sharks win the match today. Unofficially, Unofficially, these Sharks have taken the sprint relay and the Palms are just wrapping up. So they will receive that extra point. The four points are gonna go to the Sharks if they have officially taken this. We're just waiting to hear back. Waiting on confirmation on that. That means that the South Beach Palms basically gave away those points for the bonus flag to the Southwest Florida Sharks. Yeah, that's the other thing that we don't talk about very often is uh, point differential. We talk about it a little bit uh, this week when you and I spoke, but at the end of the season, we're gonna there's gonna be differentials and points that's gonna dictate who goes to playoffs if there's a tie uh, in the rankings in the uh, in the standings rather. So they threw the bonus flag, hoping that they could take the match, the Palms. Uh, unfortunately, they did not. Um, that extra point's gonna go to the Sharks. That might help the Sharks in the Northern Conference. Um, it may it may hurt the Palms overall. Definitely, you wanna get as many points as possible, no matter which conference you're playing, whether it be North or South, just because those points do accumulate and they can put you at first and second seed, which is where you wanna be to make it to the championship game. That's right. And that will do it for our match with our Palms and Sharks. We want to thank all of our sponsors, Valor Fitness. All the equipment that you see out on the grid is provided by Valor Fitness, the best equipment. Hang on a second. It looks like there's some kind of disagreement with the referees, the commissioner, and the coaches of both teams. Well, that's why we say unofficial on the score, right? That's right. So while we're, while we're doing that, we'll give a quick shout out to some more of our sponsors, Valor Fitness, and of course, Sky Hill USA. I'm Dr. Jamie here with The Box Stop, and we are going to talk a little bit about staying safe with your kipping movements while doing movements like the double touch and the triple touch. So first off, if we aren't capable of doing toes to bar, chest to bar, and bar muscle ups, we should work on those things separately before you start getting into putting them together. But this is kind of a length tension ship relationship as well. And what we're trying to do here is maintain our body in good tension as we start moving through these patterns. If you do a toes to bar and you are too far underneath the rig, you're going to lose all your tension when you try to pop up into that pull-up position. So one of the things that you'll see is people will actually come back pretty far on the toes to bar so that they can drive through and get their chest to the bar for that next part of the movement. The triple touch is no different except for you, instead of going back into the toes to bar, you're going to go now into that bar muscle up. So most of the faults that we see with the double touch and triple touch can also kind of mimic the just regular kipping pattern, whether you're doing butterfly pull-ups or butterfly chest bar in regards to the front part of your shoulder. So if we're missing that range of motion going through, we're gonna really struggle with that kit. 
If we're having pain as we pull and we fall through, you're gonna struggle when we start to do that butterfly. So what we're gonna try to do is make sure that we have available range of motion, but also the strength that we need to be able to move into those patterns. All right, folks, we are back and it looks like they are working on coming to a conclusion with this review and we'll be able to give you a little bit more feedback of what's going to happen. So we are now getting told that they will not be running this sprint relay back. Okay, so this match will end the way that it has. We'll come back when we're with you again. We're going to give you an idea of what happened, what transpired with that sprint relay. It is, this match is going to end 15 to 12. The Sharks are going to take the Palms in the first match of week two in this interconference matchup. So we will be back with you guys at 1.30.